12 years. I'm having, I'm getting ready to start some treatment for my prostate cancer. I was treated in 2013 and it's coming back. So I'm going to do some radiation treatments. Well, I don't know what we're
Good morning. So last week we decided we're not going to sit in the last three rows, so I've eff effectively moved everybody up three rows that were in the back. Then Lyle, <laughs> yes, so good. Um, I had uh, in my note to make you all sit in the first three rows today, but I said no, no, no. Last three rows, like not the last three rows, is, is enough of a compromise. So. Don't put, yeah, don't push my luck. All right. So, um, Zach, sermon response form. Go get one. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Faith. I'd like to welcome members and visitors, virtual and in person. I am Pastor Claire Aklio, pastor here at Faith Lutheran Church. Virtual worshipers, you can find the worship program at flcjeff.org under the worship tab. Um, also, we will, uh, we will be communing today, so go ahead and grab your communion elements if you haven't done so already. Um, also, if you're joining us virtually, please take a moment to tell us who you are and where you're from by typing it into the chat. For those of you who are here in person, let's take a few minutes to, uh, we don't have any visitors today, but to welcome everybody who is here. Um, so I will gather us back in a couple minutes.
In the narthex, maybe. No. <laughs> all right. Um, here at Faith, we welcome all people, no matter their race, culture, economic status, age, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression, and no matter where you are on your spiritual journey. All are invited to participate fully in the life of faith because we are all one in Christ Jesus. Carrie, who do we have uh, joining us virtually today? Susan and Michael and Kim. Nice. Welcome. I'm glad you are here today and everybody. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us for worship. So let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You may rise as you are able. Most merciful God, we confess that, that, that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Holy Spirit, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord be with you. And, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on the mountain you showed your glory in the transfiguration of your Son. Give us the vision to see beyond the turmoil of our world and to behold the King in all his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and um, hey, Zach. We don't have any kids today. Do you want to be the kid for today? You can do it, buddy. All right, have a seat. So today our sign language word is the word who. So we take our fingers and we go like this, who, who, right, who. All right, so who is this? Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King, good. What did he do? Approximately. Made speeches. Made speeches, yep. Do you know what he made speeches about? Racism. Racism, good. Uh, do you know when he lived, approximately? Like 1900s. 1900s, yep. Um, so who is this? 
Martin Luther, good. So what did he do? He penned the 95 Theses. Uh, about when did he live? Like 1600, 1700. Like 1600 or 1700? Okay, those are pretty good answers. So the other day I was talking to a different one of our youth, and I mentioned the name Martin Luther, this guy, and the youth said, who? And I said, Martin Luther, you know, the guy who started the Lutheran Church? And this individual said, ah yes, MLK Jr. And it was at that point that I realized that it wouldn't hurt to back up and do a bit of basic education for some of us here at Faith Lutheran. So today's children's sermon is more about the history of the church than it is about Jesus, but that's okay. So Martin Luther was a white man from Germany who lived 500 years ago, so 1500s, okay? He was a pastor and a teacher. He saw that the church was doing bad things, uh, abusing their privileges, and spoke out against them and ended up accidentally starting the Lutheran Church. Um, so when we, see, when we say that we are Lutherans, we are referring to Martin Luther, the white guy from Germany who lived 500 years ago. Now Martin Luther King Jr., or MLK, was a black man who lived here in the United States in the 1950s and 60s. He was born in like the 1920s, I think, but he, he was active in the 50s and 60s. He was named after Martin Luther, the white German guy, and he was also a pastor. MLK saw people treating black people unfairly, and he spoke out against that. He made speeches, right? He fought the civil rights movement, which helped to pave the way for things like the women's rights and gay rights movements. All right, so that's objective number one, the difference between Martin Luther and Martin Luther King Jr. So good. Objective number two is to talk about the Luther Rose. So I have the Luther Rose here on my shirt today, if you can see it. Um, and so this is, let me see, where's my script? Uh, so Martin Luther, the white German guy from 500 years ago, created this image that became known as the Luther Rose or the Lutheran Seal. Um, so I'm gonna give you these pieces. Two of them are attached on purpose, just FYI. All right. Um, so each part of this drawing of the Luther Rose means something special. Um, so today we're gonna look at each part of it and talk about what it means. So first we have um, the red heart with the black cross at the center, all right? So it's kind of already stacked, but just pretend it's not stacked and you can restack it. All right, so that reminds us that uh, righteousness, I mean, no, I'm sorry, it reminds us that the righteous live by faith in Christ the crucified. So to have a righteous heart, um, we live by uh, Christ crucified, right? Faith in Christ crucified on the cross. So the heart rests on a white rose to show that faith gives joy, comfort, and peace. So go ahead and stick that rose underneath or stick the, that on top of the rose, good. And the leaves are attached to the rose. They don't really mean anything, they're just there. So the white, rose is white and not red because white is the color of heavenly spirits and angels. The right ro white rose stands in a field of blue, the color of heaven, to show that joy in the spirit and in faith, to show that joy in the spirit and in faith in this life is only the beginning of future heavenly joy, okay? And then surrounding the sky blue field is a gold ring that happens, or that shows, <laughs> why can't I read today? A gold ring to show that happiness and joy in heaven has no end but lasts forever, just as gold is the highest, most noble and precious metal. So that's the Luther Rose, you put it together, even though it was kind of already put, it to get put together <laughs> when, you, when I handed it to you. So now you know the symbol of the Luther Rose. And so we have that sometimes, um, you'll see it on shirts or on Lutheran, you know, pamphlets and whatnot. Um, sometimes you'll see it on a flag every once in a while. Um, but that's what that means, it's all those meanings. And um, that was Martin Luther, right, the white guy from Germany who designed that in the 1520s, okay? All right, and also, you know, like Jesus loves you and you were made awesome and God loves you and forgives all your sins. That stuff's important too, right? Okay, <laughs> all right, let's pray. Good and gracious God, thank you for sending Jesus 
to die for us, but also thank you for sending people like Martin Luther and Martin Luther King Jr. to Earth to um, speak out against the wrong things that people are doing and to help uh, liberate people who are being oppressed. Uh, please help us to be liberators of others in Jesus' name as well. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Zach. Our first reading is from the book of Exodus, the 24th chapter. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and, Mos and uh, Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again. For Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm will read responsibly as Psalm 2. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth raise up and grow, and the princes plot together and against his anointed? Let us break their, their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. He who has thrown is in, in heaven is laughing. The Lord has them in derision. Then he speaks to them in his wrath, and his rage fills them with terror. I myself have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Let me announce the decree of the Lord. He, he said to me, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush, crush them with an iron rod, and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear, and with trembling bow before him. Lest he be, be angry, and you perish. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are all, are, are they all who take refuge in him. Our second reading is from Second Peter, the first chapter. For we did not follow clearly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from the God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will, but individuals moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to Matthew, the 17th chapter. Praise you, o Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes become dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man, the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance, dear beloved children of God, from God our Creator, through the Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the transfiguration of Jesus. This is one of the most important events in the life of Jesus, but I think few people really know completely what it's all about. So let's talk about what transfiguration means. Transfiguration is the mystical nature of the body. In the transfiguration, Jesus reveals something about himself that has always been true since the beginning of time. It's the same truth that has existed since the foundation of the universe, since the start of his very existence. It's not a new concept for Jesus, but it seems new for those to whom he is speaking. Those listening may not have, may not have been aware or understood the aspect, this aspect of Jesus before, but that doesn't make it any less true for Jesus or for anyone else. It doesn't make the new aspect of Jesus' identity any less valid, and it doesn't make Jesus' identity as a whole any less valid either. And now Jesus exists as a fuller, more authentic version of himself. In revealing this new dimension or truth about himself, Jesus is able to fully live into his divine identity. identity. You see, in this transfiguration moment, Jesus reveals his, his divinity. He comes out to reveal his true nature to some of those that he is the closest with. Not that of which he has been assigned to him at birth or by others during his lifetime, but that of which he knows to be true of his very essence down to the depths of, his co of the core of himself. This is God revealing God's self in a whole new way. This is God relating to humans in a whole new way. This is Jesus living into his names in a whole new way, living into being the Christ, living into being the Messiah. Through the transfiguration, God confirms Jesus' announcement that suffering and vindica vindication are central to his identity and mission as God's son or agent commissioned to manifest God's saving presence and empire. Jesus' changed form reflects the expectations of vindication in his resurrection because Jesus is also coming out to reveal his future glory. He's ushering into this world the kingdom come, the reign of God. And this is a holy and sacred moment. It's a glimpse of God. We see God and we hear God in this moment. Jesus' face shone like the sun, and his clothes become dazzling white. A bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud the voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. This is God making God's self known tangibly. And each of the details in this story brings us back to the story that led up, this, uh, led up to this point. This took place on a mountain, just like Moses on Mount Sinai and Elijah on Mount Horeb. Jesus' face shone like Moses' face did when he came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant. Jesus' clothes were dazzling white, just like when the Ancient One took the throne in Daniel's vision. 
the bright cloud harkens back to God's presence as a pillar of cloud outside the tent, um, outside the tent, outside the camp, just after the Lord commanded Moses and his people to leave Sinai. The voice of God comes from a cloud just like it did during Jesus' baptism, only this time there's no question about whether or not the crowds could hear God's voice. Not only that, but God reinforces Jesus' teaching with the words, listen to him. In addition to this, we have the mention of it being six, well, this depends on the um, translation because the one we read today doesn't, but uh, <laughs> the one I studied uh, mentions it being six days after the previous thing, which is a reference to the creation story, the first creation story. This emphasizes that God continues to be active in recreation, change, and transformation. And speaking of recreation, we have Moses and Elijah representing the law and the prophets personified. Jesus is continuing to rebrand the message of God that he talked about in the Sermon, of the, Sermon on the Mount. So what does all of this mean for us today? In Jesus' transfiguration, we are also transfigured. We are transformed. But only if we open up our minds and our hearts to the new things that God is trying to show us. If we hold on too tightly to tradition, it won't happen. If we refuse to step out of our comfort zone, it won't happen. If we remain willfully ignorant of those things that are existing and changing around us, it won't happen. And what's more, this type of willful ignorance is sinful. It separates us from God and from the work that God is trying to accomplish in and through and with us. You see, we can only be transformed if we are open to the Holy Spirit working in and around us, changing us, helping us to grow, and be recreated into something new. Like Jesus, the old parts of us need to die and we need to be reborn. And that experience of death, of letting go and allowing a part of our old selves to die, that's a difficult process and it's a painful process. But it's what needs to happen if we are to be a part of ushering in God's kingdom come. As I mentioned earlier this month, February is Black History Month. In this trans and this transformation, this transfiguration, is a part of the reason why I asked you to learn something about the black experience over the next few weeks. Transfiguration is about becoming who God intended us to be, relational, loving, reconciling, and hopeful. It's about the ways we grow through the actions we take. The glory you think you're going to get from following Jesus is not on the mountaintop. It's by meeting people in the valleys. You see, just like Peter wanted to build an altar and hang out on the mountaintop, we too often just want to focus the Jesus part of our lives on going to church instead of coming down off of the mountain to do the work. But we weren't made for the mountaintops. We were made for the valleys. God put us here on earth so that we could be in the valleys with other people, helping them and living with them and standing up for them and learning and growing with them. God put us here to be God's hand and feet, hands and feet, to do the hard work, to do God's work on earth, to bring about the kingdom of heaven. So I'm not going to tell you this week to let go and let God, but I am going to tell you to let go and allow God to work in and through you. Allow yourself to be transformed and transfigured for God. I want to leave you today with a quote from one of the podcasts I listen to each week. They said, Transfiguration is both mysterious and strange and also very practical. Like Moses, we are called to embody the spirit of the law and represent God's truth and justice. And like Elijah, we are called to speak truth to power and wait to hear the silent voice of God. Instead of shying away from the mystery, perhaps this Sunday is a chance to embrace it in the practical implications of being transfigured by Christ. Amen.
join together in the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Embolden your church as it witnesses to the majesty and mercy of your son. Equip lay preachers, deacons, and pastors. Move us to share our stories of your faithfulness and forgiveness. May our lives proclaim your greatness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Dwell with your whole creation from the tallest mountain peak to the deepest valley. Bless the work of conservation organizations to protect vital habitats. Support the work of disaster relief agencies around the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Guide and give wisdom to all in authority, our mayors and local leaders, our governor and state legislators, our president and national legislators. Bring freedom and justice to all nations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Give shelter to those lacking safe homes. Spur communities to work for fair housing for all. Protect our neighbors whose dwellings do not keep out dangerous cold or heat. Accompany with your touch those who are homebound, sick, or isolated, especially Jim and Barb, Gabe and Stephen, Scott, Gordon, Fammy, Fred, Mike, Nancy, Patty, Greta, Karen, Sonia, Aaron, Ezra and Lucia, Norma, Roy, Pam, Alice, Pam, Richard, Grace, Megan, Rosalie, and Jay. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Make us eager to receive your word in scripture. Help us recognize Jesus' voice in the needs of our neighbors. Make us confident to follow the way of the cross. Merciful God. Receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Receive our thanksgiving for the holy ones who have guided us in faithfulness and gathered even the unlikely as your people. With our forebears in faith and all who have, hope in, who have hoped in you, teach us to wait with courage until the promised day dawns. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. And I forgot to ask for a prayer request. Did anybody put in prayer requests? Okay. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another. We're bringing back the tradition of doing the first offering, which I think is now, or no, yes. did you, yes? yes? Yes, okay, so if you have first offerings, you can go ahead and bring them up to the basket. And we'll be, we will be continuing to do the first offering from here on out.
let us pray. Bless, blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Heavenly Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give away to, its own to his own brilliant light. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by his, this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, Our Father in heaven, who art, hallowed will be your name. Your name. Your your kingdom kingdom come, come, your will be done, on, on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial, and, and deliver us from evil. evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, and now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, this is Jesus' meal for all people. You may be seated. All are welcome. And the usher will direct you.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. All right. So, um, Ash Wednesday service will be, oh my gosh, in, yeah, 7 o'clock in like a couple days. So, <laughs> show up for that. I will be prepared by then. What? I might be on time. I'll try. Um, the following Wednesday, we'll start the Lenten soup supper potluck thing um, where we do like a devotional and we have soup. Um, and so for Wednesday, March 1st, we have the Gray family signed up for two soups. Um, so Gray family, just a reminder. Um, and there's still some spots here to sign up. So if you want to um, bring soup on the 22nd, the 29th, the 5th, or the 9th, those are of March and April. Um, find the sign-up sheet or just holler, let me know. Um, let's see what else. Youth Broom Ball has, is being postponed. Um, it will not be Saturday, February 25 at Iceland Skate Rink from 4 to 6 uh, because they weren't available until 10. They didn't have an opening till 10 p.m. So Aaron and I were like, mm, well, yeah. So uh, that is uh, going to be rescheduled. The date is to be announced. Um, so I'm starting this new program. It's a prayer partner program. Um, so if you are interested in having a prayer partner, then let me or Patty know. As a prayer partner, your duties would be to check in with your partner occasionally and pray for them. You would briefly share with, what, with them what's going on in your life and mention one or two things they can pray about for you, and they'll share the same information with you. You don't have to be like a regular worship attender, a uh, church attender to participate. Um, if you're interested in being a prayer partner, being matched up, uh, again, let me know or Patty know, um, and we'll pair you up. And so this is just like a way of getting to know people better, you know, building relationships within the church. Um, you can meet, like connect however often you want, like once a week or once every other week or once a month. You can do it via, via text, via email, via telephone call, whatever. Like that's for you guys to work out once you get paired up. So uh, let me know if you're interested in that. Um, summer camp, um, we're still waiting on hearing from the school district about ROTC, Tabitha. Yeah, okay, all right, so um, we, that's gonna happen sometime, but we don't know when yet. Um, ELCA Youth Gathering 2024, uh, July 16 to 20. Um, is there anything else? Yep, come on up. For those of you on Facebook, you may have already seen this on the Faith Lutheran Facebook and on the Jeffersonville, Indiana Facebook. I posted this last night. Two weeks from today, which is Sunday, March 5th, we're going to have an event called Meet the Congregation. So it's an opportunity if you've got friends, neighbors that might be interested in faith, Pastor Claire will send out an email blast, maybe a couple times, to ask people if they would like to come and come to service and enjoy a meal with us afterwards. We're not going to ask anybody to bring anything. The council will pick up the tab for the food. It'll be the first time in a long time we've sat down and had a meal together. Uh, the other part of this is... Uh, we want to get our congregation here because we have to have the congregation here for somebody to, to be able to meet us. So the, the purpose is to open ourselves up to people that might be interested in coming to church here. Uh, the other thing, I've left it optional. They can come to service if they like. If they would rather just come to the meal and meet some of us, they can do that as well. So again, that's Sunday, March 5th, which is two weeks from the day. So for the congregation, I would ask us to come to church that day <laughs> and enjoy a meal afterwards, and hopefully we'll have a few visitors. Thank you, Ken. Ken, remind me uh, also to put it on the sign. Okay. 
the outside sign. Thank you, Veronica. Can I help you? Yes. Do you have an announcement? I do. Oh, you're not just here to chat? I just came up to see you. <laughs> okay, what have you got? The council met on Sunday, last Sunday, and decided because we can keep it so nice and warm in here, using the fans in the entryway, that we don't need to put any auxiliary heat in here. <laughs> so, if there's any objections to that, there's objections. Okay, then how about this? We had three bids to put mini split heaters in the sanctuary. Um, one of them was 34,000 even, another one was 37,000 without electrical in, in the bid. So it would probably be another two or 3,000 at least. So we'll say that bid was 40,000. Another one was 65,000. Uh, knowing your council and how frugal they are, they took the 34,000 one, which was BJ heating and cooling from down the road, uh, and they're going to come and install three heaters on coolers, both on this side, two on that side. They had to order the equipment, it should be here probably sometime next week, and they figure it'll take about three days for the installation. So it shouldn't be long, and we'll have a warm in here again. Thank you for putting up with, as Tabitha puts on her parka there. <laughs> Is that a little hint to us? <laughs> uh, we should have it rectified here shortly with heat and cooling both, so. That is what's being done. Thank you for your patience. Yes. Oh yes, yeah. As far as the old boiler goes, we need to. It's got evidently some asbestos wrapping on the pipes, so we have to have somebody come in and uh, get rid of that before we can begin dismantling and and uh, getting it out of there. And the main reason we want to dismantle and get it out of there is because it's, there's still probably water in some of the pipes, uh, piping that are going throughout the building, and we want to get rid of all of that before uh, uh, we get a real cold spill and it maybe freezes up up in the attic or something. So uh, we, will, we will be doing that soon, uh, if I can find uh, asbestos abatement person to give us a bid, and if it's not too exorbitant, um, I would say Scott could probably go in and take care of it himself, but... <laughs> no, no. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I just remained standing because I didn't want to have to get up again. <laughs> but the uh, second cousin on my wife's side has a second surgery on the Valentine's Day, and they separated the uh, brain uh, nerves. Excellent. Good. Excellent. That's good to hear. Um, Ken, can you write on my board, my dry erase board on my door, email blast, or anyone to thank you? Otherwise, I don't want to forget that. Um, do we have any other announcements? Yes, Barb, come on up. Stand up here. You'll notice the flowers are a little different today. We are no longer using fresh flowers every Sunday. We've changed our policy a little bit in, in the effort to save about $1,000 this year. We have only eight families signed up 
to sponsor flowers this year. So we'd still like to ask you to go ahead and sign up, but on the Sundays that we do not have anyone signed up to, to uh, sponsor flowers, we will be using the uh, peace lilies. It, uh, the peace lilies and the pots cost about $170 total, but they are good for every Sunday. If you have given, if you've signed up for flowers, we will have fresh flowers that Sunday. Uh, if you've not signed up for flowers, please do so. We'd like to have fresh flowers uh, more so than the peace lilies, but uh, I'm sure my mother is spinning in her grave now because she was so against, uh, rubric said no potted plants always fl fresh flowers. But anyway, <laughs> well, I think she wrote it. <laughs> I think she wrote it in the Bible. Um, no, she was, was a, a big stickler for the following the rubrics as, as they were specified. Anyway, we've changed. We've gone to the potted plants. Um, they're easy care. We'll have to put them by a window to get some light during the week, but we'll take, Martha and I will take care of that. That won't be any problem. And like I say, if, we, if you have signed up for flowers, thank you very much. There will be fresh flowers on your Sunday. If not, please consider signing up for flowers, um, but we will have something green living on the altar every Sunday. Um, anything else? Anyone else want to come up and chat? Um, all right. I think that's everything. I hope it's everything. Um, so I want to thank everyone online for joining us today. If you enjoyed today's service or you found it meaningful, we would love it if you could prayerfully consider giving so we can keep Faith's ministries going strong. You can go to flcjeff.org and click on the Give tab to give online without even creating an account. That is actually how Jules and I both give to the church. You don't have to be an online participant to do that. Um, remember that in this world that is becoming more and more reliant on technology, to share online is to bear witness. Um, and interacting with our social medias is important. Um, that's like our only advertisement besides this sign here. Um, so you can like us on Facebook at Faith Lutheran Church, ELCA. So be sure to find us and click the follow button. And those of you again online, if you enjoyed watching today's service, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. We're also on YouTube at Faith Lutheran Church Jeffersonville IN, so be sure to sub subscribe there too. And lastly, you can find us and follow us on Instagram at Faith Lutheran Jeff, all one word. And with that said, let us rise as we are able and we will receive the blessing. Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Yes.